Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about how to approach and solve programming problems. And the trick here is to not start typing immediately when given a problem. I was told once, many years ago when I started out as a junior developer, but on you have to think before you type, because I didn't do that. When given a problem I would immediately start implementing a solution, figuring out as I go. This is not ideal, this turned into many times of having to start over and building something completely wrong that at some point somebody told me when it was in production but you actually built this so that wasn't really what we intended. As a beginner it can be really difficult to start on certain problems. It's sort of writer's block for programmers. You're looking at your empty canvas, your empty IDE, you do not know where to start. How do I even approach this problem? It looks too big to get started on. And the answer here is decomposition. Decomposition is a very fancy way of saying big problems are just many small problems together and to be able to start chipping away at these small problems you need to identify which I need to start on first and what kind of small problems they are and how they are interconnected. And once you have analyzed this you can really start solving any big problem. I'm going to talk about how to understand a problem, how to solve a problem and how to practice your problem solving skills so you can get good at this pretty fast. Let's get into it. First, understanding the problem. This phase is really about gathering all the information so that you're able to make a decision. A decision being, how am I going to solve this problem? There may be multiple ways of solving a problem, but which one you're going to pick is a decision you'll need to make. You cannot pursue all solution directions. In management, you have the 40-70 rule for decision making. It states you should make a decision when you have between 40% and 70% of the information required to make that decision. You should not make a decision when you have less than 40%. It would be a guess. It would be an ill-informed decision. And you should also not attempt to gather more than 70% or even 100% for that decision because it would take too long to gather that information and it would be a waste of time. It would not make a better decision. This rule really applies to everybody, no matter whether you're junior, senior, not experienced, very experienced. It always pays to have this analytical phase before you start typing. It will allow for better solutions. It will also allow for easier problem solving. I highly recommend it. Before coming up with solution directions, make sure you learn the why. What is the value that is being delivered? What is the value for users? What is the value for the business? If you learn about this, you'll be able to focus your solutions. You'll be able to discount certain other solutions. They might match your problem statement. They might be a fix for your feature, but they might not be a good match for why you're actually doing this. So discounting certain solution directions is really helpful in focusing and getting towards the right solution. And here I really like writing up your user stories in a specific format so that they communicate the why, they communicate this value. Many people are doing Scrum or Kanban and they're writing up user stories in some system. It would be really helpful if before that list of acceptance criteria that specify the features, that you have a few lines explaining the why first. And there's a specific format that's really common for this. As a persona, I want feature so that business value or user value is achieved. The first big approach I take while coming up with solutions is viewing a problem in terms of its data, the core of the matter. Can I already know what the data looks like? Do I already have data? Is there already something in the database? Do I have example data? Was it provided to me? Or do I not have data at all? Do I need to start inventing example data? How do I come up with good example data? These can be difficult questions on itself. It would be very unwise to start coding without having answered these questions. If you have the data, the next question becomes what data structures match? What does this data actually look like? Is this sequential data? Is it just a bunch of things that are that don't really have an order? Is it nested data? Am I dealing with a tree structure here? What are the types of the data that I'm dealing with? You can also start thinking in terms of pipelining. Is there an input-output thing going on? Do I have data in a database? Then some server-side processing that is then being shown to a user, being the input processing output, like a massive pure function, if you look at it from an architecture perspective. This would already be able to give you the information you need to start decomposing your problem. Now you have three smaller problems to solve instead of one big 
problem that is very scary to look at. Another way is viewing a problem in terms of operations you can apply to data, also called algorithmic thinking. You can ask yourself questions such as, will I need branching to solve this problem? Is there an if this, else that thing going on? Will I need sequencing? I need to execute these five steps in this order, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Is there iteration going on? I need to iterate over this array or I need to loop a certain times, otherwise this problem cannot be solved. Is the problem asynchronous in nature? Is there timing involved? Is there things that need to run in parallel or uh, are we talking about this needs to wait before that task because it cannot start without the output of that and that is something that takes a certain amount of time. And when you know the data and the operations, you can start looking at what mechanisms you may already have available for solving these problems. You may have libraries or certain implementations that are already there that will solve exactly what you're doing. Or you may have a convention. In this code base we solve this kind of problem in this way. Start investigating. This may be a great solution direction. And at this point, it's a good idea to explain verbally to a peer how you actually understood the problem. This will validate your ideas. It's like a mini code review for your thoughts. It's a very good idea to build this in your process because before you start typing, you can already catch so much mistakes if you, if you just talk to people and they will point out blind spots that you have or misinterpreted the data or invented an operation that's not going to fly with the current architecture or whatever's going on in your specific case. I talk about this in my video on code reviews, might be worth checking out if you want to know more about this. Now that you understand the problem, the next step is to solve the problem. And this all starts with creating a plan. Creating a plan can be very simple in your favorite way of writing down notes. Make a list of tasks to execute in this order. Again, sequencing. If you don't work on this thing first, you're never going to be able to solve that thing. So make sure that you create a list with numbers. One, two, three, four, five. You need to run this in this order. Having a list of tasks will create a structured way of thinking that is helpful for many things. Amongst them, if you wake up the next day, if your problem takes multiple days to solve, you can quickly get up to speed again by looking at your lists, tracking your progress. Ah, I'm halfway, I need to do this and I have done this before. If your problem is input, transform, output, you should have at least three tasks on your list at this point. Say your problem is, I need to fetch some data from a database, I need to format the data, I need to show it to a user. When you're working on this formatting, transforming the data, it would be nice if you wouldn't have to wait for the network request each time. So a quick way to solve this is to do at this point in time when you haven't written a lot of code yet or nothing at all, you would do a manual API request, get this data, save it to a local JSON file, and suddenly you can quickly iterate on your function. You're, you don't have to wait for a network request. You can just purely do the formatting on the data, test the output. Test-driven development really shines here. Another way to approach creating a plan is again to decompose. Big features consist of many smaller features and they're not created equally. Some are more important than others. If you are running with a deadline, you run out of time and you have to stop working on something, it would have been nice if you has, have started with the most important thing instead of the least important thing so that you end up with the most important thing done. And once you're ready to implement your solution, start with the interfaces, start with pseudocode. This is especially important if your solution comprises changes in multiple different files across the code base. It would be really nice to look at all the interfaces first across the entire code base, see only the function titles and the function arguments and maybe the return types so that you can already get a feeling for how you how your code works together. This is the part where you think about design patterns. Does this actually scale in this way? Am I decoupling in the right places? Am I tight coupling in places where I want it? Is this okay to have uh, this solved in this way? And once you have the interfaces, you can then start working on an initial naive implementation. If you have your multiple interfaces across different files, one by one you can implement these function bodies Take, for example, a happy path, a data set that represents your ideal version of how it would go. Make sure all these functions work with this data and then start working on alternative uh, 
edge cases or whatever's going on with your data. And it's important here to not optimize your solution yet. First, make sure you have a proof of concept. You know that this solution direction is actually going to get you where you want to be. No performance optimizations, no gold plating of any form. First implement the happy path, then start thinking about the edge cases. Then if you have a proof of concept, you can start working on performance optimizations. The next step is to validate your solution. Once you have your happy path working, you've got your interfaces, your design patterns, it's time to think about the edge cases on the other hand. It's best to start writing tests for these and implementing them one by one, validating whether your existing code works. If not, make a small change, run all the tests again. And this is also a good time to ask for a review of the whole system, all the interfaces, the naming, the design patterns, the structures you have chosen. Ask for a review. Is this understandable? Does this make sense? Are these good choices given the problem? And then start validating the other properties of your solution. Like, is the performance acceptable? Does this actually run as fast as I want to? How much time can I spend into making this faster? What is my product owner see? If you're a front-end developer, this is the moment to think about accessibility or motion design. Hey designer, is this transition acceptable? Is this accessibility uh, good enough? And lastly, let's talk about how to exercise the muscle that is problem solving. One disclaimer though, it just takes time. Be patient, especially if you're starting out with your career, you need to see a lot of code to be able to pattern match solutions to problems and to make sure they're a really good fit. Be patient. A great way to get in a lot of reps with practicing problem solving is doing code katas. Now what are code katas? They're small, exercises, small assignments that are specifically isolated from everything else. They're often in the form of here are a bunch of unit tests. There's no implementation yet. You have to make these tests pass. Good luck. This is a specification of what should happen. There's many platforms out there. There's many websites that offer code katas. They're all for free. You can just search the internet. I highly recommend it. Why katas? To explain this, I'd like to use the story of the pottery class. If you haven't heard of it, it's research uh, where they've split up uh, the people into two groups. One is a group that spends 10 hours on making one pot with pottery. And another group is making 10 different pots and they all spend one hour on these. So they make 10 different pots. The interesting observation at the end of this this research is that the last pot that the group has made making 10 different pots is always better than all the other pots from the group that have spent 10 hours making one pot. Because getting in your different reps is just a better way of learning for humans. It's just how brains are wired. This is why katas really help. If you look at what I've talked about in this video, taking in your problem, understanding it, coming up with a plan, making different steps towards your solution direction, then following that plan, implementing your solution, getting in a lot of reps, trying these things out a lot of times, each time and again, will just l make you learn this in a better way. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any thoughts or requests for things you'd like to see, leave a comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching.